The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start out with the FTSE, of course, with uh, Boris Slippery Pick Johnson. I don't know how they get those names for him over there, but he's doing the best he can. And then you also see the next chart, which is the German DAX. Uh, that one has just completed a nice pattern up in that area. So whether that means a whole lot or not, you know, I'm not really sure. The one thing that is moving, and that is the uh, the gold market. If you remember, we had that very, very important bottom coming in at the uh, 1490 level. Uh, it hit it exactly. In fact, it hit it twice. And now we're trading uh, $28 higher at uh, 1418. So it's looking like uh, very, very strong. There's a tiny bit of resistance up here, but not very much. We do have multiple ABCD patterns. If you want to uh, uh, take Twentyman's advice and defy human nature and do the work yourself, you'll see that there are two major ABCD patterns uh, in the uh, silver uh, at this uh, level up in here at around uh, uh, 1830 in the I mean, 1835 or so, something in that 1830 area is uh, what we're looking at. So uh, that, that'll that be an interesting one, you know, to pay close attention to. Also, uh, we should do this for our good friend Mike up in Toronto. You want to be able to see here that we have the uh, Platinum has got up here to the 50% uh, level. We get up to 936 in the platinum. I think 936 was the high this morning in platinum, but I'm uh, I'm actually I'm absolutely not sure yet. But uh, we're still looking. Let's take it. Uh, by the way, our guest today will be Tim Bost of Financial Cycles Weekly, and he's always in the rankings up there for the Timer Digest, which is good. I wanted to bring to your attention here the uh, chart of the natural gas, folks, because I believe we're we're doing for this correction. We talked about it yesterday uh, up around that uh, 234 level. We got down to 228 so far tonight. But uh, you'll notice that those that the last two cycles have crested right in the middle. That is, uh, that's a sign that, uh, you know, the market's usually ready to crest. If it, if you'll notice the first crest here on where the where the right or the left shoulder is, you see how it crested really early. That is a sign of high translation. In other words, when the market crests early in the cycle, it goes down into the next cycle. You notice the next cycle it right in the middle, which was still good, and now we're right in the middle again. So we should be heading down uh, to test the next support, which is down around 225 one more time. So that's just some small technical stuff uh, that we're looking at, folks. I, I do want to mention mentioned that, uh, you know, when we had Tom on, Tom Hugard on on Tuesday, you know, he said he looked at thousands of charts. And folks, that's how you learn patterns. I mean, you, you can just look at the machine, but until you actually study the patterns, and the way to really do that is to print out the chart and make it blank. Don't have any oscillators or anything on it. And then just take a pencil and a straight edge or ruler and just start uh, drawing between highs and lows. And there, you'll notice you go from low to high to low and high low high and all you're doing is drawing in you're drawing in little uh, triangles that's all you're doing and pretty soon you put the triangles all together and that shows you oh my goodness that's a pattern and well sometimes they look like Gartley sometimes they look like butterflies sometimes they look like one three fives sometimes they look like three drives to a top but they're there if you pay attention to them you'll be able to see that they're pretty close to being right where they uh, where they're supposed to be anyway um, Someone asked me a question about the most important chart that I, I worked on this week. Uh, I have to say, folks, that it's it's got to be this one right here. Uh, just, just give me a second here. I want to do one at a time. First, first we'll start out here with this. Uh, I'm not going to – well, I might do them all here. This is the uh, chart of Apple. Uh, you'll notice that the double ABCD up there is at uh, two, uh, 244 and change. It got to, it's actually 243.80, and it got to 244.80. 
Uh, that so far has been high, might be higher today, but there's a double A, B, C, D there. Uh, we did the weeklies, we did the monthlies on that. And uh, as you know, that there's a lot of things uh, telling you that there's a uh, major top being formed here in the uh, Apple, if you believe, uh, you know, if the patterns work. And sometimes they don't. You know, we know that. Uh, nothing works all the time. So, but that is a major top. And whether that has anything to do with the NASDAQ or not, you know, I'm not sure. Just to give you an idea, we got this from one of our listeners up in Canada yesterday uh, who does some. Uh, I'll do Amazon in just a second. Uh, Terry, I've got that on the list here. Uh, that'll be the next one. Here, you'll notice here, this is the Apple. Uh, this is an hourly chart. You'll notice here that it made that three drive to a top pattern when it gapped up to that uh, 244 and change. So that's it. Now let's uh, just take a look at Amazon. By the way, I'm I'm uh, starting a collection for Mr. Bezos because it looks like you know he's going to. Uh, need some money. Anyway, this was, if you remember, those of you that get the newsletter, I said these FANG stocks look, they don't look very good. And the worst one of the group was Amazon. You'll notice that it couldn't even rally to a 382 retracement when we had Microsoft making new highs and Apple making new highs and Google making a big ABCD. And, uh, you know, Amazon couldn't do anything. Just went sideways for a little bit. Now it's down $110 today. Uh, it's, I think at last I saw it was at 16.73. So whether that means a whole lot, I'm not sure. But it uh, it does tell you that uh, it's under a great deal of pressure. This this company is not going under, folks. It's just under a correction. That's all there is to it. I don't know where it's going to stop, but that's uh, what we're watching. You see the same thing. Uh, if I don't know where Tesla's trading. Do you, if you remember yesterday, uh, we we said that there was a, a beautiful 61% retracement in Tesla at uh, at uh, uh, what was it, uh, 301, uh, and it got as high as 303 and a half. I don't know where Tesla's trading today, but you know that should be pretty strong resistance there at the uh, at the in Tesla at that uh, at 301 level. Can someone tell me where the Tesla is trading so it'll have a rough idea of what's uh, what's going on? I'd like to know that if we could. So we'll see if uh, that's it. Well, we've got the gold really smoking. We're up to 1520 in the gold. It's uh, doing pretty good, which is really good. That's what we like to see. And uh, what else? The stocks are selling off a bit, not too much, but just a little bit. And uh, neither here nor there. So we'll keep a close eye on those as we uh, go through and look at some of these here today. Okay. Uh, let's move on here uh, to the next one that we want to look at. We're up, uh, I believe, we're up to thirty dollars now uh, in the uh, in the silver or in the gold. <clears throat> Remember, <clears throat> the harmonic number in gold is uh, is a thirty is thirty. <clears throat> wow. Mm, 34. So we're very, very close to that. Another couple dollars, we're going to be up there at the 1520 level. So we'll pay it. <clears throat> wow. Time out, boys and girls. <clears throat> wow. Frog got in my got in my throat and he won't get out. All right, let's uh, move on. I wanted to ask. Uh, well, we got a break coming up, so when we get back from the break. I will go over uh, something that uh, someone asked me a question about yesterday. I posted a chart on the advancing eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the uh, uh, Apple on the long-term monthly. You can see uh, where we are. Uh, big patterns up in here. Uh, if you like patterns, this is Mother God and Country. Uh, whether that has anything to do with the NASDAQ or not, I'm not sure because we've got a big divergence going on here uh, in some of these markets. Uh, one of the things that someone sent me last night was a chart from the Elliott Way folks. I wanted to uh, br bring this up so you folks can take a look at it here. Uh, it shows the divergences that we're seeing, the Dow being, of course, uh, the weakest. Uh, and you know, this is, happens to be a 30-minute chart, of course, over the last several days. So you get to see from the 14th all the way out to 10 days to where we are right now. We did make a new high, of course, on that uh, S&P, but that's on a 30-minute chart. It's not a new contract high. The, the old contract high was 30.28, and we, we took out 30 uh, uh, 3014, we made it to 3015. But at that same time, you can see how the Dow Jones was lagging very, very badly. The other chart that I, I still think really means a lot, and I I'll uh, have to, you know, wait and see how the market closes today. But I posted this last week, and we have not broken this head and shoulders pattern yet. So we'll see if that's going to mean very much or not, because uh, it's a perfect one three five pattern, and it's also a head and shoulders pattern. Uh, that was the one I thought, you know, in fact, I thought for sure we would be screaming to the upside uh, during this week. But, you know, we certainly haven't. We've seen a lot of divergence. If we look at this uh, from the standpoint of the Dow Jones, Let's get this up here. So we'll have Tim Bost on here in about uh, 10 minutes, and you'll be able to hear what he has to say. Here is the uh, the NASDAQ is the candlestick chart that you can see here. And if you just did the highs from uh, April you know, to July and July to where we are now, you see that is perfect symmetry. Uh, it is just really nice. And it's also those Fibonacci numbers that we like, 55 days in between the two. But if you'll notice the chart right above it, which is the line chart with the dark line up there, 
here where it says Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, that shows lower highs, folks. That's not a very positive chart. And these last few days, the Dow has been uh, very weak. But part of that is due, of course, you know, to the problems that we've had at uh, Boeing was one of the big ones. And I think Caterpillar uh, was another one. So we'll see. The other thing, you know, th this one, this one is what really, this is what very troubling chart to me. Well, it's not troubling. I'm just thinking about it. Let's just get this up here. There's really no troubles at all with these things, but let's get it up here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Doggone it. I just had it here. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Doggone it. Doggone it. Doggone it. All right. Give me a second here. Um, all right. Oh, by the way, the open interest did increase in the uh, in the S&P yesterday, but not in the NASDAQ, the Dow, or the uh, E-mini, uh, or the E-mini. But I've got to show you this chart. It's very, very important, and I know where there it is right here. All right, we're going to get this up here to take a look at it. This comes from uh, Tom McClellan, Sherman, Sherman McClellan's, uh, Sherman and Charlene's McClellan son up there in uh, Washington. This shows you, you'll notice how the advanced decline line has been breaking out to new highs. That is ordinarily very bullish, folks. But let me ask you a question. Just think, think this through me. Look, look at back in August when the advanced decline line was dropping and stocks were going up. That was a sign that something was wrong. Now we have the advanced decline line going up and stocks coming down. How can that be? I mean, uh, it, you know, it's a total number of uh, stocks advancing decline. I don't understand how that could be that way with stocks going lower, especially in the Dow Jones. And, of course, the uh, New York Stock Exchange is uh, is a little lower. Uh, Russell's still a little lower. The NASDAQ certainly is. But that's a very, uh, very, very troubling uh, uh, factor. That's what I'm looking at. So whether that means much or not, I don't know. But let's pay, uh, let's pay close attention to it as we look at this here this morning. We've got the market uh, was under a little pressure, getting a little bit of bounce back right now, about two points. So we'll see whether that uh, means anything or not. Uh, we just had a six, uh, three dollar, uh, three dollar break in gold, which is the biggest break of the evening. So we'll, we'll see whether that uh, means anything or not. But uh, we were almost, uh, we were 31 handles from the high folks. We went made a low at 90. We got up to 1521. The harmonic number in uh, the uh, half, half harmonic number is uh, 32. We got to 31. Um, and they made double ABCDs. If you want to have some fun, just go look at your uh, Go, excuse me. Go look at your uh, uh, charts on silver, your daily charts. I, I, I think I've. Uh, I fact is, I, I tried to do a really nice uh, double A B C D, and I posted it, and now I can't find it. And I was trying to find the uh, really great pattern that David White sent out to his uh, chart people that shows the Gartley patterns. And David, I can't find a doggone thing. I don't know where it is. It's one of those technical days. It's always a challenge. So we'll take a. Uh, uh, watch as we go through it. Uh, can someone, I want to bring this up here, and would someone please tell me where uh, Tesla is trading uh, today, folks? Because here is the number we were looking at yesterday. That number uh, with the market was up uh, $93. And uh, it was uh, the the high was uh, 303. The 61 percent retracement on Tesla was 301. And uh, so I, you know, I'm just showing you this because sometimes these Fibonacci numbers work, sometimes they don't. So if you'll uh, keep an eye on it, it might be something. It's 297.30, so it's down a few bucks from there. If it gets above uh, 304, then you'd be wrong. So here you've got a $300 stock that you can trade for less than 1%, boy, way less than 1%, because 1% would be uh, would be three. Don't I have to take about 1%. So anyway, that's a uh, that's neither here nor there. Okay, so that's what we're paying attention to. Uh, someone's asked a question about Amazon. Folks, I don't follow Amazon very much. I use their products quite a bit, but I but I don't follow it uh, too much at all. The one thing I did want to mention is, uh, you know, Mario Draghi is leaving, and, uh, boy, they're really giving him a bad, uh, a bad score over there in Europe, you know, because uh, the euro was 140 when he came in. Now it's at 111. 
and and dropping. And uh, the other part of it is is that the GDP was positive when he was here eight years ago. Now it's negative. The only thing he did do was get to negative interest rates, and everybody that's over 65 doesn't particularly like that because that's how they use, you know, the income. So let's uh, remember that it's not always what we seem in here. Okay, let's get this up here. All righty. Uh, all right. Let's just move this one over here. All right, we talked about the gold. We've covered that. Uh, we want to make sure that gold is uh, doing it. We're up. Uh, let's get up here. This is the longer term picture on the gold, folks. Uh, just remember that it still could be a bear market. Uh, we got lower highs in here. Uh, we got up to uh, we we got oh we took out the highs of uh, oh we took out the highs of early October uh, of the sixth of October we got up to thirteen fifteen twenty two so uh, we're, we're, there's a possibility we make fifteen thirty three without too much trouble as you can see here because of the fact that uh, we certainly went above the uh, fifteen twelve and uh, that was. Uh, one that didn't, uh, you know, just blasted through. But uh, we'll we'll see how these going to be at the end of the day as we look at uh, some of these things uh, through the. Uh time window that we're looking at. Now, we're going to have a break coming up here pretty soon with our good friend, Tim Bost, 877-927-6648. Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
All right, folks, we're back and we're talking with Tim Bost, I believe, out of Florida. Tim, are you there? I am here, Larry. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good morning to you, my <laughs> friend. Good. I have I have a couple questions from our listeners, if we could start out before we uh, take a look at the charts you sent us. The first sure. one is, what is your what is your view here of the stock market? Or, uh, can you tell us whether you're bullish, bearish, indifferent? What is your feeling? <laughs> it's hard to be indifferent in a market like this. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. Really I, I like but that we have one. Of I do like that one. On. <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> we, are, we are looking for a, a, a brief uh, pullback a, a little bit of a, a, a short-term bearish phase here. Uh, all of our longer-term indicators remain uh, bullish, and in fact, uh, we we're, uh, have plenty to, to run yet in the uh, long-term uh, bull market, but uh, for shorter-term traders, uh, it's time to take profits and uh, uh, trim the sales a bit. Okay, that makes very good sense. The second question uh, that we have is, uh, how are you ranked with the uh, a Timer Digest so far this year? Are you holding your own? Well, we pop in and out of the top 10 uh, ranking in terms of the uh, overall market. Uh, we r remain securely uh, in the top 10 with the long-term uh, market to timers. Of course, we shared honors in 2017 as, as the uh, top uh, timer of the year. So uh, we're, we're pleased with the results overall. We're, I'm not highly competitive in that regard, but it's always interesting to get those thir <laughs> third-party opinions. So that's a good thing. <laughs> right. That's good. Uh, the first chart that you – the fact is you want to talk about – Bitcoin today, and that's really great because we've had a lot of inquiries about it because we've broken down. Uh, you want to tell us what you're looking at here, uh, Tim? Right. In fact, it was the recent breakdown that uh, uh, got my attention here, so it's time to uh, sharpen our pencils and look at things again. And uh, this first chart is showing the planetary price line levels for support and resistance uh, longer term uh, for Bitcoin. Of course, we've got a line chart here because uh, the daily price bars ha have such uh, yeah. insane swings that uh, uh, it gets a little hard to, to decipher things if we use the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know, open, high, low, close uh, bars on, on a daily basis. So these are just based on the closing prices uh, to get us a, a line chart here. And we've got uh, the, uh, uh, the diagonal green lines, which represent the positions of heliocentric uh, Venus, and the horizontal purple lines, which are the trans-Neptunian chronos, uh, and heliocentric perspective as well. And we found that this combination uh, does a pretty good job of defining key levels of support and resistance uh, for uh, Bitcoin. And what we've seen recently here is uh, uh, on the right-hand side, they're hitting a third harmonic Venus line, the diagonal line, and finding a little bit of short-term support. We're expecting a bit of a bounce there. Uh, and over on the right, we have uh, calibrated the price levels in accordance with those Kronos lines. Uh, so uh, if we uh, should break lower than we are running right now at around 7,300, 7,400, uh, then the next uh, significant support zone kicks in at 6,970. Uh, and of course, our uh, price objectives uh, on the upside are uh, 93.70 and uh, uh, 10,570. So uh, we're expecting a potential rally uh, coming out of all this. Well, that that's really an interesting one because I mean you're probably the only person looking for a bottom down in here, but those cycles certainly look like they're, uh, you know, that they're they're looking pretty good. That's the right, way I look right. at. I mean, yeah. Exactly. Wow. Uh, okay. Our, our second chart of showing Bitcoin cycle projections, and uh, this is an interesting area. We've been investigating this for some time, and in fact, in our book, uh, Bitcoin Astrology, we've got a whole section uh, on the cycle work uh, with uh, Bitcoin. Uh, the big challenge here, obviously, is that we have a relatively short uh, historical period of trading for Bitcoin. Uh, mm -hmm. So in doing cycle analysis or astrological analysis for, for that uh, uh, matter, uh, we like to have lots of, of back-testing data to, uh, to cross-check things. And so if you've only had a, a dozen years or so of trading experience, uh, uh, it's still a relatively new uh, market. And so what we've done with our cycle projections is uh, knocked out all of the longer-term cycles that have start started showing up and are doing our calculations only with cycles that run uh, under uh, about 40 days uh, and are uh, doing the composite uh, work with that. 
And so based on this, uh, we again are looking for a bottom here uh, short term uh, and then a move upward uh, to point A, which is the 11th of November. Uh, and we try to identify these, uh, these cycle movements and then see what uh, significant astrological indicators uh, may be triggering those as well. Uh, at point A, we've got uh, the true lunar node conjoining uh, the trans-Neptunian Hades, and we think this will uh, define the first peak in a double top uh, for Bitcoin with a, a second high coming in about uh, two weeks later on the 27th of uh, November uh, when Neptune makes its direct station, uh, mm -hmm. and then a decline following that. Uh, on into the end of the year, uh, point C is uh, December the 29th, uh, when we have uh, Mars in a 135 degree angle to Kronos. That's a pretty significant uh, lineup there uh, that we're looking to, uh, as a pretty big inflection point for all markets around that configuration. And then a sharp rally as we move into the new year, uh, topping at about... Uh, 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 on around uh, the uh, 20th of, uh, of January there uh, with the uh, retrograde station by the Transneptunian Zeus. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's our overall picture over the next couple of months that we're projecting here. Tim, I have three questions already from the same question, and that is, tell me, they want to know what a Transneptunian is. Is that right out of Star Trek, or what is that? <laughs> well, maybe Star Trek figured on those. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> Actually, the Transneptunian objects that we use are, in fact, um, objects in the Kuiper Belt, uh, which is a band of, of uh, uh, fairly small uh, uh, planetoid objects uh, out beyond uh, Pluto. Pluto is actually considered one of the uh, innermost uh, trans-Neptunian uh, factors. Uh, and uh, we work with a set of eight of them that were defined about 100 years ago by a German uh, astrologer, uh, Alfred Witte. And uh, he did some pioneering research identifying where these things should be long before uh, the telescopes back in the 1990s, we were able to see that there was actually stuff out there. So uh, we, we factor those into our work. Tim, uh, is that Uranian astrology? Yes, uh, it, it has been popularized uh, in uh, the West as uh, as Uranian astrology, and there have been some books uh, published uh, uh, with uh, with that uh, uh, that moniker uh, and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Vita and his colleagues uh, defined it as, as the Hamburger Schule uh, because they were doing their work in Hamburg, Germany, uh, pre-World uh, War II, uh, just uh, right shortly after World War I. Uh, and uh, uh, they, uh, they had their, their ideas that they shared there. And then uh, uh, it took until after World War II for much of the work to get translated into English and make its way across the, uh, the big pond. <laughs> Okay, that makes sense. Uh, you know, Bill Meridian is our guest here, and he and Victoria Martin many years ago, this was going back 35 years ago, the hospital that I was born in there in Clinton, Indiana, burned down, and so no one really knew, had no birth certificate, so no one really knew, uh, they think I was born, but they're not sure. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, they had to try to, to uh, read, re, what do they call that when you go back uh, and... A rectification. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he rect yeah, he went to find out what time I was born, and both of them were... Uh, working independently, came up with the exact same time, 11.55 p.m., and the only thing I had to go on was the fact that my aunt uh, told me that I was born right before midnight, and 11.55 is right before midnight. <laughs> that works. Very good. Hey, Tim, thanks for uh, staying with us. Can you stay with us for another segment? Sure, yeah, I'll be glad to. I'll hang on. Thank sure. you so much. Yeah. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average Average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. All right, folks, we're back. We're talking with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly out of Sarasota, Florida. Tim, uh, the next chart that we're showing here is a retrograde motion of the planets. You want to explain to the folks uh, right. how that uh, works? Yeah, we had, had, had uh, talked uh, in the previous segment a little bit about Bitcoin and the prospects for this being a low uh, coming in shortly and moving uh, upward after that. Uh, and this is a chart uh, showing the average response of uh, a Bitcoin to a Mercury retrograde stations. Now, uh, Mercury retrograde is something lots of folks who are not particularly knowledgeable in astrology have at least heard of. And uh, this is, that's because it occurs fairly frequently. We get Mercury retrograde stations about three times each year. Uh, and the importance of this is that this gives us about 27, 28 iterations of Mercury retrograde stations vis-a-vis -vis the trading history of Bitcoin. Uh, so we've got enough data to work with to begin to draw some kinds of conclusions uh, that are statistically significant about the behavior of Bitcoin following these times when Mercury begins its retrograde motion. Now with this chart, that zero point in the middle of the chart uh, is the date of the Mercury retrograde station. Uh, to the left of that, we show the typical price behavior of Bitcoin for 30 days prior to uh, the retrograde stations, uh, and then uh, to the right-hand side for 30 days uh, afterwards. Uh, these are calendar days, not uh, trading days here. Uh, so what we're looking at is uh, typically a fairly congested period uh, with the trading action in Bitcoin for about a month prior to a Mercury retrograde station, and then things take off to the upside fairly dramatically. And we're seeing an average uh, price move after the retrograde station within that uh, 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 four weeks uh, following it uh, by, of a, an increase on an average of about 24% in the price of Bitcoin. So that's a pretty tradable move. Uh, that's what's caught our attention here. 
Uh, based on this work, then, we do have a Mercury retrograde station coming up a week from today, in fact. Uh, I'm sorry, a week from yesterday on uh, the 31st of October on Halloween. And so uh, that's when that period will begin at that zero mark. And then based on our current uh, price levels with Bitcoin, we're projecting uh, the potential for a move up to $10,060 per Bitcoin uh, by the uh, 5th of, of uh, uh, December here uh, when this, uh, uh, this chart runs out after that 30-day uh, period. That's a heck of a move, 24%. Uh, Tim, uh, the other question that someone's asking, uh, which exchange do you use for uh, you know, buying and selling Bitcoin? Do you have different ones, or uh, how do you handle that? Well, uh, you know, it, there are a number of exchanges right now, and a, 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 it's a fairly uh, frenetic uh, uh, market. Uh, I'm personally uh, uh, not uh, actively trading on an uh, intraday basis, uh, and I know many people are engaged uh, with that kind of, of trading. I do hold Bitcoin, uh, and I, I do most of my work through Coinbase uh, as the uh, e exchange uh, there. So it's not really a trading platform, but it enables you to convert uh, uh, cryptocurrencies from one to another and uh, uh, fiat currencies as, as well. Uh, so I found that useful for uh, basic transactions. Uh, my personal policy is to keep uh, Bitcoin uh, that I hold off of exchanges uh, pretty much. So I'll have a very small uh, position on the exchange at any given time. And I, I use a, a hard wallet uh, called a Trezor, uh, which uh, basically uh, keeps the data uh, off of any public uh, venue. Okay, I've got a question here from uh, one of our uh, listeners. You may not want to answer this, but the question is, okay. how early? How <laughs> I like no, those. It's not, it's not what you think, Bubba. <laughs> okay. no, no. The question is, uh, wh when did you when did you first start buying Bitcoin? Were you one of the original guys, or when 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 did it start to pique your interest? Well, I got in relatively late. Uh, I got involved, I believe it was uh, August uh, or early September of uh, 2017. Uh, and at that point, it was before the big run up to the, the $20,000 uh, mark. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. it was, uh, I, I wasn't picking it up for, for pennies on the dollar kind of thing at, at that point. So uh, <laughs> that, that's relatively late in the history of Bitcoin. But uh, it was not a bad uh, time to get in. And I, I believe, again, that as we see uh, this market maturing, uh, and especially when we get pullbacks like this uh, that we're currently seeing, uh, these begin to look like buying opportunities. And that's, of course, up to the discretion of the, of the individual speculator. And I definitely view this as speculation rather than an active trading vehicle. Well, you know, Tim, I have an interesting story. Uh, many years ago, I had a young man over in California working for me. He was a really smart young man, having trouble with the marital problems. His wife and he didn't get along very well, so they split up. And he had a chance to go to work for Google, and he got the job. He was one of five people that Google hired. And what happened was he... Uh, went up there and his project was uh, cryptocurrencies and oh, he realized after he was there about three months that hey I don't need uh, I don't need Google to do this you know I can <laughs> I can do this myself and so uh, he was from Sofia Bulgaria and oh. uh, he uh, ended up uh, my guy he made a hundred million dollars Jim Wow. And, wow. I, and I know that for a fact. He, he bought a school and a hospital there in the little town there in Bulgaria where he lives. And then he's uh, living, clipping coupons off the rest of it. But uh, it was it was really, uh, really great. In fact, it's what's interesting was uh, I met him in, in San, uh, Los Angeles at a, at a seminar once. And my he and my wife struck up a con uh, a conversation. And she says, you got to talk to this guy. He's really smart. And he worked with me for about six months. And, of course, he was uh, really, really involved with this stuff so he uh it turned out to be really great but uh, really super nice guy i talked to him maybe well, a couple times a year now but uh did did extremely well hey listen buddy i want to thank you tell the folks how they can reach you and you've got some books and stuff you want to tell us about right, that absolutely we do have bitcoin astrology available on amazon.com if you're interested in pursuing some of the work that we've done in that arena of course our uh, flagship book is mercury money and the markets also available from amazon uh go to financialcyclesweekly.com and we've got a link there to connect you with what we call our Astro Traders Tip of the Week. It is a free service, and we'll send you a weekly email with a link to videos and other things that we are uh, currently looking at in the market action overall. So that's a great way to stay connected.
Hey, that's super. Listen, thanks for joining us today, buddy. And uh, tell your lovely bride I said hello. If we get down there, we'll break some bread together, okay? Absolutely. Let's plan on that. You have a great day right. and great weekend. Thanks, thanks a lot. Larry. Thanks a lot, Tim. You bet. Bye -bye. Tim Bost, Financial Cycles Weekly, always in the rankings there of Timer Digest. We'll have Tim back on. I uh, don't quite understand Trends Neptunian, but it certainly sounds cool, that's for sure. All right, let's take a quick look at one of the things we want to look at, and that is the uh, uh, we want to take a look at these notes, folks, because they're certainly trying to uh, get a <clears throat> one second to get a rally going here, even though it's a lot more difficult. Uh, not so much uh, negative interest rates are not in the news right now, but we do have a rally uh, slightly in vogue here uh, in the Treasury notes. So I think we've got a chance here to get them up here to around that 30, 50, maybe even as high as 3,100. But uh, we made that big top up there. And if you remember, open interest was dropping at that time. So uh, anyway, that's been you know, folks, you realize that we've been in a three-week correction in Treasury notes. So if it's any good, you're not going to get more than three weeks. That's what I would think. But this is a 60-minute chart, so you have to, you know, add that to your uh, uh, interest when you see that because it's not a daily. The daily looks a whole lot different. The daily is, uh, you know, still way up near the high, but uh, I believe we've made some type of a major top here in these Treasury notes. So we'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, I want to uh, end the show by uh, talking to us here about the market. We've got a nice little rally going now. We rallied about eight points off the bottom, just like we usually do. Whenever it gets down to 3,000, 3, it always bounces back a little bit. But uh, this will be an interesting day today. There's a lot of resistance up around the third. 30, 15, 30, 21 level, big ABCD patterns up in that area that could be very, very important. One other factor that we've been watching, folks, and that is the uh, the price of hogs. We're down into this area at around 64, 63. They've got to hold 62 uh, in the December hog, so pay attention to that. Uh, same thing is true. We've had this huge rally going. Oh, I wanted to bring the uh, price of, uh, bring the Bitcoin chart up for uh, Tim because He's looking for a uh, bottom in here, folks. So let's uh, put his feet to the fire and see if his little cycles come in here. We've taken out the lows from way back when, back in uh, June. So uh, just because we took, you know, that, that that's not a magical number. That could be nothing more than a double bottom. So if his cycle's working, we'll be watching that over the next couple of days. And those of you that watch Bitcoin, let's try to remember to pay attention to see if this low does hold. Because I do like the cycle work that Tim does. It's uh, really state of the art and you know he's in that ranking all the time for timer digest so we have to give him uh, by far the benefit of the doubt he does a, a super job that's the main thing uh, we don't have anything going with the uh, new moons folks until uh, next uh, on the 27th that's the the next one that that we have that'll be uh, that'll be interesting that will be uh, of course on Sunday we're starting to get the influence of that uh, right now so we'll be watching that closely also so that's what we're watching here today. So I want to wish everybody a wonderful weekend. Try to help somebody out that uh, has a whole lot less than you. And we already know there's a lot of folks out there like that. That's for sure. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. And we'll see you Monday. And don't forget, folks, on Monday, our guest will be none other than Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. And then we will also have Bill Meridian next week. May God bless. <laughs>